Some new YNW Melly court files have been released. Things are looking even worse than we originally thought, as the trial is now set to start around the first quarter of 2022. This will be one of the biggest rapper-related court cases of all time, and here's all of the new information that you need to hear. Let's get straight into it. So on October 20th, YNW Melly's court files were updated. Now prosecutors are requesting the Broward County judge to force YNW Melly to provide his DNA in order to help solve the court case. This means that the prosecutors found good enough evidence that they believe with YNW Melly's DNA that they can now solve the entire court case. Now in the court documents it states that in the vehicle where YNW Melly allegedly did the act towards two individuals, there was evidence left behind in the car being a yellow jacket. Now this yellow jacket was analyzed by the Broward Sheriff's Office Crime Lab and a report was then issued. Now dated on September 2nd in 2021, the report indicates that Anthony Williams, aka YNW Sack Chaser's DNA was a part of the sample and that there are three other potential contributors. The contributor profiles are not eligible yet to be entered. The prosecutors want to prove that YNW Melly is guilty in this case by using his DNA on the DNA that was found on the yellow jacket. Now any sort of DNA testing that gets proven to be correct is very hard evidence to be in court. After this information being present into the courtroom, an updated photo of YNW Melly was then released. Now first, these photos of YNW Melly in the courtroom, his emotions looked very good throughout the court hearing. Here you can see YNW Melly smiling, looking very confident as usual. That was until sources say that the court brought up the new DNA evidence and things turned very sour in the courtroom, as when leaving the courtroom, a photo was then taken of YNW Melly when he left, and it's hard to tell if the quality is making him look very more concerning and upset than normal, but right here he looks very, very defeated. Now from the court hearing on that day, there was new court files shared and it's basically a timeline of what happened the day Sack Chaser and Juvie sadly passed. Now this all starts on October 26th in 2018. At roughly 3.30 a.m., YNW Melly, Juvie, Sack Chaser, and Bortland were all at a recording studio getting new work done for one of YNW Melly's albums. When their studio session was over, they then left the studio and hopped into their Jeep and they started heading home. The driver of the vehicle being Cortland Henry, otherwise known as YNW Bortland, with YNW Melly sitting directly behind him, have law enforcement believing that this was the perfect sitting arrangement for this kind of act. Now YNW Bortland ended up driving on a back road home. This was to skip the early morning traffic, as well as law enforcement believing that this is so that no witnesses were nearby. Now while law enforcement don't know exactly what happened inside of the car, the theory is that once the car was pulled over, a distraction was made within the vehicle to catch Juvie and Sack Chaser off guard, while YNW Melly did the act towards both of them in the vehicle. Law enforcement believed that it was YNW Melly who did the act, as YNW Melly sent his girlfriend a text message at the time, two weeks later on Snapchat saying, and I quote, I kept Bortland with me, cause at the end of the day, he did one of the realest stuff in my life. Now in court, this was thought of YNW Melly's way of thanking YNW Bortland for remaining loyal and not snitching. Law enforcement believe that after the act was done, YNW Melly and Bortland brought the Jeep into a side parking lot where nobody was in sight and that's where YNW Melly and Bortland roughed up the vehicle with their own firearms to make it appear as if a drive-by happened, which would then be Melly and Bortland's excuse for everything happening. 
Now, law enforcement believed that because they were able to go back in time with YNW Melly's cell phone provider and have a GPS on his cell phone tracking his movements at the time it all went down. Allegedly very strange movements happened around the time at 3.30 a.m. where the car was brought into weird parking lots and side streets. And the weirdest part of it all was that after this incident went down, YNW Melly and Bortland took 40 minutes to get their best friends Juvie and Sack Chaser any sort of medical attention. And it makes you think that what were they doing with this 40 minutes is the main question for this entire court case. So it wasn't until February 13th where YNW Melly was brought into jail for the act which led to Juvie and Sack Chaser's passing. YNW Bortland was also brought into jail for two counts of accessory of helping Melly cover it up. Law enforcement then brought out a huge list of evidence against YNW Melly, which is something that you need to see. Here's all the exclusive evidence files that I found in YNW Melly's court case. Now, law enforcement has been working so much to break down what really happened on that night, and it now seems as if that question is solved. Here's how it starts. Now the first document states this and I quote, Then also we have a video of Mr. Demons admitting to doing an act towards two individuals in the head. Now I had to change a few of those words in that statement, but you probably understand at what I'm trying to say. There's a literal confession video of YNW Melly doing it on his cell phone. But in the next court document it states and I quote, This video was on Mr. Demon's cell phone, which was brought to my office by Jameson Francis. And that is how we had that. And that was all of the evidence that your honor has. Now this is where it gets very interesting. First off, Mr. Demon's in these documents is YNW Melly, just in case you didn't know his last name. Jameson Francis in that court document is a very famous rap manager called 100K Management. Jameson is a manager for big name rappers like King Von, YNW Melly, a lot of Chicago rappers as well. He's very trusted and very well liked in the industry. Now it turns out that 100K Management, otherwise known as Jameson, was the one holding YNW Melly's cell phone during the entire court case and him being locked up. Now when law enforcement found out about it, they ended up putting out a warrant for YNW Melly's cell phone, which means that he had to turn in the cell phone or else he would be catching charges of his own. So allegedly law enforcement can do something called a data extract. Now this basically means they have the power to pull anything and everything that was ever on a cell phone. Now this means that there could be deleted text messages, deleted photos, even snapchats will be brought back and law enforcement are allowed to use any evidence they find in the court case and this is where it's gonna get YNW Melly sentenced to life. Law enforcement now have all of this new evidence on YNW Melly which is very concerning, as the next court document states that the cell phone evidence is probably the biggest part of the entire case. Now I definitely have to agree with this alleged video of YNW Melly being found as the biggest piece of evidence as his face is in it and him admitting to doing it. The court document next states, and I quote, these particular cell phones, which were both iPhone 10s we're on the T-Mobile network. So T-Mobile is a very interesting feature. It will tell you the environment that the cell phone is in. So from the cell phone records, I can tell you the exact moments that demons got out of the car and staged the drive-by location. Now this is probably the biggest, if not second biggest piece of evidence in the entire court case. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, law enforcement believed that YNW Melly took the vehicle into a side parking lot to rough it up. The only way that they would have proof of him doing that is by a surveillance camera somewhere in the middle of the street. But obviously on a back road, there's no such thing as that happening unless you're in like a very populated area. But law enforcement being able to use his cell phone as a GPS tracking tool and going back in time to track the phone is huge. 
as law enforcement can now go to the area of where it happened, see if they can find any sort of evidence that was left at the scene, and things in that nature. This court case has been in a standstill now for what it feels like a decade, but with all of the new evidence being found, it's almost seeming as if this court case is going to be over very soon. If you want to stay up to date with everything happening in it, leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. It's been District Trending and I'm out. Peace.